might seem odd for somebody who is known as the workplace energizer, for somebody who travels the world writing and speaking about inspiring, positive, humor-filled workplaces to talk about the dangers of being too nice. It might seem a little odd. After all, we all learned in kindergarten the importance of being nice, playing nice, and we all want to be known as nice people. I want to be known as a nice person. I think I'm a nice person. I know you think you're a nice person too, and I'm so glad that you think you're a nice person because yes, it's important, but there are some dangers in creating a workplace culture that is too nice. There is a danger in you being too nice at work. Of course, we need to infuse our workplaces with respect and patience and compassion and kindness and empathy. But there's a difference between being kind and being nice. There is a difference between demonstrating empathy and being nice. There is a difference even sometimes between being compassionate and being nice. Here are seven dangers of creating a workplace culture that is too darn nice. Number one, if you're too darn nice, you run the risk of groupthink, where everybody goes along just to get along because you want to play nice in the sandbox. So nobody brings up the elephant in the room. Nobody challenges assumptions or asks challenging questions or offers opposing ideas. You don't do the critical thinking you need to do. You don't engage in passionate debates in your meetings because you want to play nice. And when you fall in that trap of groupthink, that is when really dangerous and stupid ideas can happen in your organization. That's when, as well, you don't get the best possible idea. You miss out on a really awesome, fabulous idea because everybody just wanted to get along and play nice. Second danger of being too darn nice is you run the risk of creating so much stress for yourself and even ultimately burning out at work because you don't know how to say no to anybody because you want to be nice. So you say yes to everybody. Sure, I can do that. Yes, I can help you out. Yes, I'd be happy to do that. And then all of a sudden you're not very happy. You're a little stressed out because you've said yes one too many times. One of the nicest things we can do, one of the kindest, let me rephrase that, things we can do, not just for yourself, but for your teammates, is to learn to say no. It is kind to say no. And here's the mantra I want you to embrace. You need to learn to say no in order to have the energy, the time to say yes to the things that truly matter at work. Number three, related to number two, if we're too darn nice, we end up becoming a people pleaser. We all want to please people. I get that. But if we become such a people pleaser that we go out of our way to, again, go along to get along, we end up pleasing everybody perhaps but ourselves. We end up doing a lot of damage to our own self-esteem, to our morale. Again, we create unnecessary stress in our lives in an effort to be nice to everybody. The fourth danger of being too darn nice and creating too darn nice a culture is nobody ever hears those uncomfortable truths that we all need to hear at work from time to time. And when we don't hear those uncomfortable truths, we are doing a disservice to one another. We are doing a disservice to the people who need to hear them. You are doing a disservice to your team and to your company because your performance could improve if people heard the constructive feedback they need to hear. But when we all get so concerned about being nice, we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to have any conflict. And I get it. Nobody likes conflict. I don't like conflict. We need to reframe that. We need to understand that successful rocking teams and workplaces thrive on an atmosphere of open and honest feedback, of open and honest communication. It is one of the kindest things you can do to offer constructive, positive feedback to a colleague, to your boss even. Imagine this. Imagine you were working in a job and for 12 years you were doing something that was annoying the heck, driving your coworkers batty, and nobody came and told you. Wouldn't you want to know? Wouldn't it upset you to find out 12 years later that you were doing this and nobody spoke the truth to you because they didn't want to hurt your feelings because they wanted to be nice. And meanwhile, your performance suffered, your career suffered because nobody told you the truth. One of the kindest things we can do is learn to have those difficult, challenging conversations and create that environment that is open 
to honest and constructive feedback. Number five, a subset of number four, and we know this from the research, people don't speak up in the face of unsafe work practices because they want to be nice. They don't want to create conflict in an awkward situation. They don't want to be seen as the jerk for being the person who speaks up. One of the kindest things you can do at work, I want to suggest, is speaking up in the face of an unsafe work practice. One of the kindest things you can do is to help make sure your colleagues go home safe to their families. The sixth danger of being too darn nice is you tolerate jerky customers. Some of the most customer-centric organizations that I've researched around the world embrace the mantra, no, the customer isn't always right. The customer is a bit of a jerk sometimes. The customer can be a major jerk. That's a very long mantra that they have, but they send that message out to their employees. No, we don't put up with abusive customers service because we care about you, our employees. We care about your well-being. So the customer isn't always right and we need to be brave enough to fire our customers sometimes and to send the message, we don't need your business. If you want to be a jerk like that, please go visit our competitors. They'll be happy to have you, but we are not going to put up with that behavior. If you put up with jerky behavior from your customers, it does a disservice to your employees, it does a disservice to your other customers, and it harms your brand. And number seven, and perhaps this is the biggest one of them all, because we're so nice at work, because we all wanna get along at work, we tolerate jerks at work. As I talk about in my book, The Jerk-Free Workplace, jerks create an enormous amount of stress. Jerks cost your team, your company, far more than you could ever realize. And we sometimes, in an effort to be nice, don't confront the jerks. We don't deal with them the way we need to deal with them. We don't, again, have those challenging conversations that we need to have with them. We don't confront the jerks because we want to be nice and avoid the conflict. And I get it. One of the toughest things we can do in an organization is to let somebody go. But sometimes that is the right thing to do. It is the right thing to do for your company. It is the right thing to do for the rest of your teammates. It is the right thing to do for your top performers in your organization to not tolerate the bottom 5% soul-sucking, fun-sucking jerks. In fact, look at it this way. It is one of the most unkind things you can do to tolerate those jerks at work. It is one of the most unkind things you can do to not do anything about their behavior. It isn't fair to anybody in your organization to tolerate that behavior. And it's not kind to them. You're doing them a disservice too by covering it up, by sweeping it under the rug and not ever dealing with those serious performance issues. It's not very nice to have to deal with those performance issues, but it's the kindest thing that we can sometimes do. So what about you? What do you think about this topic? Does it resonate with you? Does it make sense? Have I missed something? Are there some other dangers of being too nice at work? Do you buy that there's a difference between being kind and being nice at work? I would love to hear your comments on this. Please leave a comment in the comment box. And if you haven't yet joined our growing community, please hit the subscribe button and subscribe to the channel Inspiring Workplaces, where we talk about creating non-jerk-like positive rocking workplaces that drive outrageous results.